button. Hello and welcome to part 8 of creating custom content management systems which is like the bare bones and the basics and the fundamentals on how to create a system sort of like Joomla or WordPress from scratch to give you ultimate control over design and layout of the website. Alright so when we last left off we were in Dreamweaver discussing the create new page functionality and the parsing script that would parse the new page's information into the MySQL database for us. Now we're going to be discussing the edit existing page form here and how that all works. So let's first look at this form. Here we have a form that's wrapped up right there, or the whole thing. This form has, like I discussed in part 7, has the uh, return validate form JavaScript function going on to where they have to submit a number into that field or some value into that field before they press the edit button this button before they press that button they have to enter a value there or they'll get the JavaScript alert the same for the delete page form there okay and now we send the values to edit page .php. and let's discuss that now it's as, it's that simple we just give them a little field and a button they put the number in the field and then that page comes up. So here we go to editpage.php. When they click the button, that's what's brought up. Here we check for the uh, the admin check again to make sure they're logged in as admin with the session. And here we have another PHP block that starts the parsing. Uh, not the parsing, but the request to gather the existing data for that page out of the database to throw onto the fields here. See how we're echoing the data into those fields? First we have to gather it from the database according to the ID that is sent into that field or sent to the page. And what we do is we we run the same filter that makes sure it's nothing but a number in that ID in that page ID because it only should be a number and then we connect to our database now after we connect to the database we can then run the query in the database according to or referring the PID number the page ID number once we gather the page title we select the page title link label and page body from the pages table where ID equals page ID PID limit one and then we run the query and after we run the query we run a while loop on the result set and in the while loop we can access the rows in the database and then put those into local PHP variables here and for the page body I just remove one of the break tags to make it render correctly and you'll see why if you comment this out and run your system for a little while you'll notice your system is putting extra break tags in things and it could be due to the way I filter things but it's just fine this works great for me and all my systems and this is only really necessary if you're not using a JavaScript WYSIWYG editor or a flash WYSIWYG editor because you can have uh, your users input any kind of uh, tags or whatever they want and the the WYSIWYG itself will convert all of that by default into uh, HTML encoded or HTML entities rather so you really don't have to worry about it and they all have uh, all those good conversion systems for making the entities that somebody would enter in into HTML entities okay so after we get the all the data we need then we free the result set and then the HTML part of the page runs down and displays all the page data and that's what we'll be looking at let's go to the home terminator and if we go to edit existing page say we put page 2 then it's, uh, it gives us all of that information so this is that point we're at in the script where things are automatically thrown into the fields according to which ID is set okay and then 
we have a validate form function in JavaScript here in the head once again to make sure that they put in where is that let's close that one to make sure they put in all three of these fields and so that function makes it to where they can't remove any of the data so say they tried to remove the link label or the title you see they get that JavaScript alert okay so once they that JavaScript alert will not run so once they get all of the data in and they press submit then they go to page edit parse dot php that's where this form is posting to so we go to page edit parse dot php here and let's explain that to you the first line is and I write up top you may want to obtain the referring site name that this post came from for security purposes here which I also wrote in the page new parse for making new pages it's on top of that one too you may might want to make sure that the referring script is uh, the actual script that it's supposed to be and not coming from somebody else's server because sometimes people hack systems like that if they know what your your parsing script is which they can see if they look in the source code uh, then they can post to that parsing script all the variables that your form your form would from another website so you, you sometimes you want to make sure that it's coming from your website posted variables okay and I'm not going to show you how to do that because I got things to do busy alright so what we're going to do here is grab all the variables that are coming from that form and in that form we're sending a hidden variable this time of PID and it has a name PID so when we get that variable here because we access it up top remember right there so we have it available in our page and we just send it so we send the page title link label and the page body again and this time we send the PID with it so we know in our script knows which uh, ID in the database to update all of this data so here we run that the filter function on it again and conversion to HTML special chars which all this wouldn't be necessary if you have uh, the WYSIWYG a JavaScript WYSIWYG editor or a flash WYSIWYG editor I just I'm, I'm just gonna keep mine standard and not apply a WYSIWYG to it but I'm gonna show you how you can apply one to yours or, or talk you through it at least let's see so here we go to after we run the filter functions on it all we do is we gather the posted variables into local uh, PHP variables then we run the filter function on it again like we did in part 7 and then we connect to the database then we use uh, MySQLI query and our connection to run this SQL syntax on our database so we update the pages table set set is kind of like you can translate that to field so update pages set page title equals new page title data link label equals the new link label data and page body equals the new page body data that the person wanted to edit and last modified is equal to now so we can know in the database when this page was last modified okay so and the last thing is a where clause that says where ID equals this page's ID and that's how that works and then we have the MySQLI error ready to go in case something's wrong in the query and if nothing's wrong in the query then it will echo echo it will echo out to the page operation completed successfully and give them a link back to the index of the admin center then you exit your script happy day so that's how you edit pages when they press edit existing page here it's just those two scripts involved really so now let's discuss the delete page this is very simple very small okay so when the admin is on the home page of the admin center and they click or they want to use the little form here for deleting a page it works very similar to the way this one works where they have to put in a number here and if they don't they get the javascript alert warning box come up and so once they put in one they want to delete 
uh, you might want to put in a buffer page when they press delete you might want to make a page that says are you sure you want to delete this title and this body you show them the title and the body of the page that they're about to delete and then they can confirm deletion I'm not showing you how to do that I'm just showing you how to delete it out of the database you would have to build your little your little gateway page to the to the deletion if you wanted to because a lot of the times your client might put the wrong number in there and zap out a page he really wants to keep then he'll get pissed at you or they'll get pissed at you because they're stupid and put in the wrong number so what you want to do is make sure you get a buffer page in there maybe and let's go into the code view and see where we're going with this this also runs the return validate like I said uh, the JavaScript function up top and the action is page delete parse.php. Let's open that page up. Page delete parse.php. Okay, here is page delete parse.php, which all of this is going to be included in the free source package, the zip download that I create. And I write up top again, you may want to obtain referring site name that this post come came from for security purposes here. Exit the script that is not if it is not from your site and script so what we do is we grab that posted ID that came from the index page here when they put it in the ID of the one they want to delete and they send that to this page which this might come from your gateway buffer page but what you do is you send the ID here to this delete script and then you include your database connect function there or include your database connect file connect to your database and simply run the query with this SQL delete from pages table where ID equals this pages ID and then or die MySQLI error so if something goes wrong you get the MySQLI error and if nothing goes wrong you'll get uh, echo out page has been deleted successfully click here for the index and then go back to the admin home page and that's how it works like I said in my system here this simple demo that's just a tutorial there's no buffer page there's no gateway there's no cushion page to where once they put in a number into into my system here and they press delete it's gone no matter what it is there's no uh, confirmation page you might want to put that in it's a good idea you gotta have stuff like that because a lot of times we make mistakes you know simple mistakes alrighty I think that's everything that shows the last little bit yep so now all we need to know is when we go to create new page next step is all we need to know is uh, what WYSIWYG editors we can get for free and I'll show you exactly where to implement the WYSIWYG editors Okay, that will be part nine, and we'll see you there.